Yeah, load shedding or no load shedding, we will worship the Lord. Yes. Nothing but nothing will stop us yes. serving our mighty God. Yes. I want to read from Zechariah 2, if you want to follow that in your Bible. And um, Zechariah 2, and ons gaan die hele ene lees. Gaan jullie so net so kijkie gaan sê dat ek gau wil soek in jylle bybel. So terwijl ons net daai plekkie soek, daar is een gereed 2. Vandag is my woord wat ek bring nie baie lang nie, maar een wat die Heere op my hart kom leed. A word of motivation, a word of encouragement. And I'm going to read from, well, the entire Zoraya 2. Let's just close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity today to be in your house. Thank you, Lord, that we can come before you and worship your name. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will fill this place for every single heart and that you will pour your love into every single heart sitting here today that everyone here Lord will know that you are God I pray Lord that you will bless every word that will be spoken and that everyone that needs to receive and hear will receive and hear what you want to put on their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, Where are you going? And he said to me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is what it's width, width and what is its length. And there was the angel who talked with me going out. And another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, Run, speak for this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls, because the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape you from your dwelling with the daughter of Babylon. For thus, says the Lord of hosts, he sent me of the glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of my eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people, and I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will take possession of Judah and his inheritance in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. Amen. You know, there's a few verses here that really stands out, but... I just love verse 8 where he says, 
For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you, touches the apple of his eye. Wow, praise the Lord. Sure. So many times in life, we go through so much difficulty, so much hardship. And listening to testimonies here today as well, so many times things like, like we heard you today, people going into their houses and they look and they, I don't have, but I trust the Lord. There are so many of those times that we go through in our lives. Things that we, we, we don't have, but we just know that, that He will provide. But you know, there's also a lot of people out there that don't have that faith. That don't believe that Jesus is with them always to carry them through and provide to their needs. So many times these difficulties seems to go on forever. Sometimes we are challenged with some stuff and we sit there and we pray to God and we're like, but when, Lord? Because I've been praying for this for months and I know that you are sitting here today and you've been there or you are now in that. When you get to the point where you just think, well, you know what, I just have to accept this is my life. I just have to accept this is who I am. And then you end up, when you accept it, you just move on with your life because that's just probably the way God wants it for me. And then we move on. But every now and again, it comes back to us and we realize, and it hits us again. And you think, why do I have to go through this difficulty? Why do I have to struggle so much? Why can I not have a breakthrough on this problem that I am dealing with? Sometimes we feel and we think that God has forsaken us. We feel that we're alone. We feel that God doesn't care. I'm sure that you agree with me. We all have been there. Where we sit and we think in a specific situation and we feel that but God doesn't care anymore. It even makes us sometimes feel distant from God. Like as if there's a wall built between us and Him. Like when we pray, that we pray against a wall that God can't hear me. That you're alone in the wilderness. And there's nobody that cares. And that you're all on your own. That you're fighting all of your battles alone. Who has felt like that before? Who's felt like that before? I'm sure that you agree with me that... We really sometimes sit there and in that moment we think that where is God? Why is it not? Where, where's the breakthrough? Sometimes we just feel like we're never going to tr- taste the true victory in the situation that we're in. When we read Zechariah 2, it makes me think about the Israelites. At this point in time, where the angel appears and he brings hope to them. He brings hope to them and he says, you are the apple of my eye. And I am in your midst. You are not alone. But it makes me think all the way before we get to this, how many times the Israelites went through the same thing. They lost their faith in God. Just because there were moments of silence, they lost their faith in God. And every time God came through and He said, you know what? I'm still here. Every single time. How many times have the Israelites gone through this? When were they going to actually accept the fact that they will never be alone? I want to tell you today, And it is so important that you understand, just just like with the Israelites, you are never alone. How many times have you gone through your life in difficult moments in your life? How many times were you standing, facing challenges, and you're thinking, God, where are you? 
I pray in the morning, I pray in the afternoon, I pray at night, I go to church, I read the word of God, I go and attend 10 crusades, I walk the streets, I do everything, but I do not hear from you. And how many times when we're in that situation, we tend to just lose faith. Slowly but surely, we step into a comfort zone of, I'm on my own, and I know that there is nobody that's going to care. But I want to tell you today that if you're in that place today, go back. Because you know what? Just like with the Israelites, there were good times in your life where you knew that it was only God that got you there. There's this beautiful saying, I love this. Don't forget in the light, in the dark, what God did for you in the light. And we have to walk with that because every single time, just like with the Israelites, when things go bad, we want to say, God, where are you? But think about, go back to your past and think about how many times that God put you, uh, uh, took you through that situation. Every time. And I say this verse so many times, but it's so important. Hebrews 13 verse 5. I will never leave you and never forsake you. It is words that Jesus has given us. Even if you feel that you're alone, you are not alone. In that dark moment that you're in, don't go and fall back. Don't lose your faith. Think back, rather, in the days when you were in the dark and how Jesus got you out of that dark spot and took you to the light. Don't forget in the dark what Jesus did for you in the light. Ever. All right, I want to read Deuteronomy 4 verse 9 quickly. Deuteronomy 4 verse 9. Only be careful and watch yourself closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. We should never forget what God has shown us before in the light. We've got to stand on the promises that he has given us in the light and know that when we in the dark that he will as he did before come and rescue us Amen. through that there's a few examples just a few people that felt that they were in the wilderness left alone just a few Hagar Ruth David but one that obviously stands out is Jesus Christ himself. For one moment, think Jesus, in his life, he goes and he spreads the gospel. He did nothing wrong. Nothing. He went and he healed people. He saved people. He was just good to everyone. But yet, they took him. And they... Put him on a cross. He was humiliated. He was punished for doing nothing wrong. He was tortured. Think about how bad he was tortured. How much blood he shed. You know what? And in that time, the suffering that he has gone through, even him at a point thought that he was forsaken. And that he was alone. But you know what? God knew what he did. Because God had a plan. And even as it was with Hagar and Ruth and David and whoever whoever else. He had a plan with Jesus. And there was still victory. The dark time that Jesus was in. He still took me. He said, yeah, but Yaku, he, he died. Where's the victory in that? The victory is in the fact that he rose from the dead. And through that victory, you and I today can be safe and forgiven for our sins. Now, if that is not victory, then I don't know what is. So even in the darkest moment of Jesus Christ himself, God came and he brought victory. Because if it wasn't for him, you and I would not have that today. 
think about those people, those prophets that went through hell but came out victorious. Think about Jesus going through that. Sure. So I want to tell you today, even like with Jesus where he thought he was forsaken, but he wasn't because God had a plan and his plan was to save the world. So I want to tell you today that just in the whatever situation that you find yourself in today, God has not forsaken you. He has a plan. He does have a plan for your life. I want to tell you to now, every time I use the word victory or victorious, I want you to go victory, but with passion in your heart. I want you to go victory. Let's try that quickly. Victory. Victory. You know what? Jesus rose from the dead and God had a plan and God has got a plan for you. So today I want to tell you today, if you feel today abandoned, if you feel lost, hurt, hopeless, in pain, maybe you feel persecuted, lifeless, worthless, tired, or alone. And I go on because the list is big. Maybe you feel completely, completely lost in the wilderness. And that nobody sees and hears your heart and understand what you're going through. Whatever it is and whatever situation you are in today, you are serving the same God that helped Moses. Do you hear me? You're serving the same God that took Moses through the sea, Red Sea. You serve the same God that took Joshua through the Jordan River. You serve the same God that saved Ruth and saved Hagar and saved David. And you serve the same God that raised Jesus from the dead. Think about that one. It's the same God. He never changes. Never. Ever. It's the same God. And if Jesus could do that for them, for Moses, for Joshua, for whoever, for Jesus, He can do it for every single one of you. No, it's not He can. He will do it for every one of you. Yes, that is the God that you serve. The God that never changes. The God that is the same from the day of Moses all the way till now. The God that has a plan on your life. And again, if you ever think that whatever you're going through is not part of a plan and you don't understand why you have to go through this, I want you to really again remember, when you walk out of here, it's crucial. Jesus was hanging on the cross and said, why have you abandoned me? But yet... God still had a plan for his life. He did nothing wrong, but he was crucified. And even him felt that he was left alone. But God had a plan. We are sitting here today thanks to Jesus Christ. You, God, have a plan for your life. And it is a good plan. Always. I want to encourage you that God sees your pain. God sees your suffering. And God understands what you're going through. You know, so many times you say, ah, but how, how? That is not possible. Of course it's possible. God came to earth in the form of mankind, Jesus Christ. He went through everything and a hell of a lot more than what we do. He does understand what we're going through. He has not left us alone. He has not left you alone in the wilderness. I want to tell you today that as we speak, and I'm speaking this over your life today, He is putting a wall of fire around you today. And I want you to now, just for a moment, close your eyes. And I want you to really... Do it with a passion in your heart. I want you to close your eyes. And I want want you to see how the Spirit shows you how there is this 
fire mm. burning around you. You're standing right in the middle of it. And Jesus is igniting this yeah. fire. Jesus. Today, the Lord wants to tell you that no weapons formed against you shall prosper. No weapons formed against your health shall prosper. No weapons formed against your finances shall prosper in Jesus' name. And that wall of fire that is being burned, that are burning right now, that is being ignited right now, is your protection in the blood of Jesus. And I want you to stand in this wall of fire and as you walk out of here, wherever you go in and wherever you go out, that you will know that this fire is burning, protecting you. Do not kill this fire. Walk out of here and take it with you. You will walk through wilderness, you will walk through the desert, but this fire will burn and you will never, ever be alone. Thank you, Jesus. He will make things new again for you. Whatever you are facing right now, He's going to make all things new again. He will lift you up again. You will have a prosperous future. He will be with you every single step of the way. And thanks to what Jesus did for us on the cross, you will taste victory. Victory! Let's hear us. Victory! You will taste victory. Even through death. You will taste victory because that's what Jesus did. You see, that's the difference. If we serve Jesus Christ, the Son of God, even though we die, we shall live. That was the words of Jesus himself. And that's the difference. Because if we are saved in Christ, even death is a victory. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you serve a God who sees. You are the apple of His eye. He said it there. Let me prove it to you again. He says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations. For who touches you touches the apple of his eye. You are untouchable. Yes. Because you are the apple of his eye. Wow. You are victorious through Christ. Victory. Victory. I want all of us. Stand up. All of you. Let's stand up. Think about whatever it is that you are facing right now. Maybe you're without a job. Maybe you're going home and your cupboards are empty and there's no food in there. Maybe you are struggling with health issues. Maybe you are struggling with someone in your family. Whatever it is today, I want you to remember that there is now a wall of fire burning around you. And you're going to walk out of here victorious through the through Jesus Christ on the cross. And I want you to declare that victory today. So you're going to put your hands up now and you're going to shout as, with passion and as much passion as you have. Victory! 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 victory. In Jesus' name, victory! Jesus' name, victory! Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we proclaim victory in your name today over every area of our lives. We are untouchable because we are the apple of your eye. We thank you, Jesus, for putting a ring, a wall of fire around us today. We are untouchable. We thank you, Lord, for the victory that you have brought us through the cross in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for coming today and bringing us motivation and encouragement knowing Lord that whatever it is we're going through we are not alone and you will always bring us through it in Jesus name touch every heart Lord today here Lord pour your love into every heart let them experience the true love of God 
Lord, open their spiritual eyes that they will see the truth. Open their spiritual ears that they will hear the truth. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.